Hi friends, wherever you are on this uh, Sunday morning, just a huge uh, welcome to you, whether you're at Wonthaggy, Grantville, anywhere around the Bass Coast or around the world. Hey, just a, a welcome to you again. And uh, I think this is fantastic that we can connect this way, even though we're, we're separated and we can't meet face to face, that we can uh, connect over the internet. And uh, I just think it's fantastic. So, now last week we started our series on uh, work and uh, rest. And uh, if you jump on our webpage, you can, uh, this is all, all the stuff there, if you want to re-listen to it or you've missed it, uh, just your church online uh, can give you everything. We've got Testimony Tuesday, we've got Thursday Thought, uh, we've got Wildfire Material, we've got our prayers and announcements, everything's on there, heaps of information on there, or you can jump on uh, YouTube uh, as well. But just a quick catch up uh, on last week. Last week, we looked at the patterns of work and rest in our lives. We looked at uh, working from rest, having rest as our foundation that we work from, not working and working and working and then collapsing at the end of the day. You know, and this might be a new concept to you, but I guess are you, that question remains that we, we posed last week. Are you resting from work? You just keep going until you can't keep your eyes open any longer. Or do, you keep, do you feel like you just bounce from one activity to the other activity? Or are you working from a foundation of rest? Last week we explored how, how God and Jesus operated like this. How, how the God, how Jesus modelled this when he was here on work. He, he worked from rest. He worked from connecting with the Father. Now before we jump into it, hey, let me pray. Father, I just thank you that we can meet like this. I thank you that we can connect today. Father, we know that your Holy Spirit is not bound by buildings or bound by anything. So Father, we thank you that wherever we are today, your Holy Spirit is right there with us. Father, I pray that the words that are of you would, would penetrate deep into our heart this morning. The words that aren't of you, you would just cause them to bounce off. But Father, we pray that at the end of this we would become more like Jesus. We pray that you would challenge us to be more like Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, last Sunday was, it was something really interesting happened. And uh, we, we woke up early as we tend to do uh, as a family. And we went for a walk at about 8am last Sunday morning. And uh, we didn't go anywhere new. We didn't go. Uh, we just went for a walk as a family. We didn't even go down a new track. It was a track that we had been down uh, many times before. But something really interesting happened last Sunday. You know, I noticed things differently. I noticed the, the, the birds. I noticed the, the blossoms from the tree. I noticed little skunks. I noticed little plants that I had missed previously. And, and I got thinking... To myself, I thought, well, why haven't I noticed these things before? And then I got thinking, because most of the time I, I go down that track, I'm normally, normally on my bike, and I'm normally racing after the kids on their bikes too. And, and as I'm tearing down on their bikes, I miss all the finer details, don't I? I miss some of those small things. You know, I think God has actually given us this time of, of, of COVID-19 for, for just for that reason, for us to slow down. For us to see things differently. To take in maybe some things that we've been missing. To take time with our family. To take time with the beauty that is around us. To build and value relationships. You know, this just doesn't need to be with our family. We can apply those same things to our faith. We can apply them to our faith. We can go deeper in God through prayer, and we've got a prayer meeting on this Sunday. We can stop and value his creation. We can see it again through fresh eyes. We can build our relationship with Jesus. You know, the natural question is why? Why, why slow down? Why, why, why rest? You know, last week we looked at Genesis 1, we looked at Psalm 23, we looked at Jesus' life as an example for this, and Jesus modelled this. As I said to you earlier, for many of us this, is, this has been forced upon us because our schedule has, has gone from something like this to something like this. 
So we can take this time, even though it feels strange, we can take this time to, to reassess. We can take this time to set new patterns in our lives. We can take this time to see things differently. You know, today I want to jump into our passage, and, and if you're familiar with it, some of you will be familiar with it, John uh, 15, uh, 1 to 8. Once again, if you've got your Bibles, and I encourage you to have your Bibles with you, uh, you know, the beautiful thing, the fantastic thing about a video is that if you don't have your Bibles, you can pause me right now. You know, you can pause me, and I'll be, when, when you unpause me, I'm still going to be here. So pause me now, and uh, go uh, get uh, your Bibles. Welcome back, once you've got your Bibles, or now that I'm unpaused. Uh, John 15, uh, 1 uh, to 8. The vine and the branches, I'm sure you'll be familiar with it. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that does, that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown to the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So, so the answer to why is... is is right there in this passage. You know, to give you the take home right now, why do we need to learn to be better at resting? Is so that we can bear much fruit. By resting, by abiding, as this verse says, by abiding in the vine, abiding in Jesus, we will then bear much fruit. You know, I'm reminded of uh, a, a massive lemon tree that was at our old house uh, in our backyard. And one day my parents came down and they said, oh, can we, can we have some lemons? And uh, I said, yeah, no problems. And I got a plastic bag. And, and they said, look, we, we will, can we have a, a lot of lemons because we want to give some away to our friends? I said, yep, no problems. I thought, you know, I'm going to count the number of lemons. And I kept picking fruit. I got the ladder and I picked fruit. I counted 200 lemons that I took off that tree. And I gave to my parents that day. And you know, as I, as I turned around, I looked at the lemon tree, you could hardly tell that I had taken any lemons off it. You know, I want my life, I want your life to be like that lemon tree that we have so much fruit that it's overflowing. Overflowing with fruit. You know, we all want to know that our life matters, don't we? We all want to know that what we're doing is going to bear fruit. And the secret is, is right here in this verse that we just read from Matthew. This is such a fantastic verse that Jesus is using this, this image of the, the vine, this image of the, the branches. It really drives home the point of, of rest. A another way that Jesus puts it is it, 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 the words that in the, are abiding and fruitfulness are like the words that Jesus... Jesus is using this image of of the branch and of being pruned back to the vine, of being hidden in the vine before sprouting out for a new season of fruitfulness. Here we see this rhythm of abiding and fruitfulness, of rest and of work. In this passage we see abiding that Jesus, abiding in Jesus is a prerequisite for any type of fruitfulness. Abiding comes first, rest comes first. You know, in this crazy, fast-paced life with constant stimulation, with 24 hours, seven days a week, where we're all constantly connected through the internet and Facebook and Twitter, 
You know, we run from one activity to the next, causing us, as I've said many times, to collapse at the end of the day. This rhythm that Jesus is introducing here, that he's introducing to us, this rhythm of rest and work, can, can seem foreign to us. You know, because we can, we can just get so used to work, 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 activity, activity, activity. It takes some time for us to adjust, to learn Jesus' rhythm of life. Jesus is giving us an invitation here. He's giving you, he's giving me, he's giving Phil an invitation here. To leave our cares and concerns of that day and rest. Please hear me, I don't speak, with, speak as someone who has mastered this. I struggle with this just as much as, as, as you might struggle with it. I struggle to keep it a balance, but I think there are a few levels that we can struggle. We, we, can struggle, we can struggle daily. We can struggle weekly. We can struggle monthly. We can struggle yearly. And in these times of daily, weekly, monthly, we need to come to a complete stop. Where we reach a place of rest. It's in these times where I think, where I've found that God's voice is the loudest. Where God's voice is the clearest. Where his direction is the clearest. Now like a, a flywheel on a car that's spinning. I'm not talking about slowing that flywheel down just for a little bit and then ramping it back up again. I'm talking about slowing that flywheel down to a complete Stop. It's in these moments that we are renewed. It's in these moments that I'm reminded that I'm a child of God even when I am doing nothing. You know, one of the, the hardest lessons I've had to learn in my spiritual life is this. God is far more concerned about my relationship with Him than what I do for Him. Let me say that again. God is far more concerned about my relationship with him than what I do for him. This is a challenge. In these times of resting daily, weekly, monthly, we are sowing into our relationship with Jesus. And they are crucial. You know, the real challenge for me is, is, is daily. Daily to have a time when I just sit and rest, to focus on God, to rest in God, to give my day, my friends, my family to God. At first, as I said, this can seem really countercultural in a world that says, go, 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 work, 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 produce, produce, produce. You know, but I've found that it's in those times when I do, when I actually stop. When I invite God into my day, when I connect with Him, that out of that, my day actually becomes more productive. You know, recently I've been getting into the office and I'll spend the first 10, 15 minutes before I, before I turn my computer on, before I check my emails, I'll find that the first, those, those times I just, I just still my soul. I open up uh, my Bible. And that's where I get some of thought, Thursday thoughts from. I open up my Bible and I say, God, speak to me. You know, and not every morning he says, I get something, but a lot of mornings I do. You know, and then after that, I'll just, I'll listen to a few worship songs. And what a way to start the day, to rest in God. It's awesome. You know, it's even in some of those moments where I, I pluck up the courage and I say, God, what do you want for me, for Brendan, today? On a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, before I get stuck in, what do you want for me today? You know, it's been interesting. Some days I get nothing. Other days, God puts a name on my heart, in my mind, a family on my mind, maybe someone I need to ring, I need to connect with, I need to message. See, hey, how are you travelling? So what does it look like for you? What does it look like to you from work to work, from rest? What does it look like you for you to abide in the vine? 
to abide in Jesus, to rest in Jesus, so that you can be fruitful. What rhythms have you got in your life right now? You know, while the, the world is on this time out, while the world is having a break from its schedule, this is a fantastic time to lock in healthy rhythms. Rhythms that Jesus had. Rhythms that Jesus modelled. You know, I want to give you a, a daily rhythm, a real practical thing. You know, maybe you could pray this before you go to bed, as you head into your, your time of rest. You know, it might, at the beginning of, of, of that new day when you are resting, Maybe you can pray something like this. Jesus, I give you all my hopes, thoughts, feelings, fears, joys and concerns and my responsibilities. As I rest and abide with you in sleep, I trust you to run my universe until I wake in the morning. You know, John McLean were here. He would say, that this reminds him of a great old hymn. And you might even say this hymn uh, to yourself before you go to sleep. But it's turn your eyes towards Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. You know, before you go to sleep at night, do you just, God, I commit it to you. I want to... Rest in you. So that's daily, weekly. Have you got, you know, having a day off is important. You know, God created the world. We see that in Genesis. And we see that he had a day off. You know, if it's good enough for God, I reckon it's good enough for us. If you work for yourself or even if you work for someone else, have you got a day when you don't answer work phone calls? Have you got a day when you don't check your computer? Have you got a day when you, you try to do things to refresh your soul? Fishing, walking, playing board games with the family, going on a bike ride, building a vegetable garden. Something that is refreshing, something that encourages rest. Something as simple as having a bath, reading a book. Sitting in the sun. Have you got a weekly routine? Monthly. What do you do monthly to check out? To check out of the normal routine that is in your life. Maybe you go on a date with your husband, with your wife. Go for a drive as a family. Walk on the beach. Have a night away. Something that slows you down. Something that releases the stress. That changes the rhythm. That causes you to rest in Jesus. Have you got a yearly rhythm in your life? I think holidays are, are fantastic. And in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, that, that's normally in January. I like the fact that January is a change of pace. I like the fact that January you can choose to go away or stay at home. You can have time to just totally check out. I remember the day that uh, I finished uh, my job as a project manager. And uh, as I went back in the office for the last time and as I, I handed over my company work phone, it, it was like a burden had been lifted off my shoulder. I was no longer on call. I was no longer responsible for jobs, for trades, for teams. And it was refreshing. I slept well that night to not have that phone. I want to get practical with you this morning. What rhythms have you got in your life? What rhythms do you need to put into your life? Daily rhythms, weekly rhythms, monthly, yearly rhythms in your life. Because you know, Jesus operated out of rest. He worked out of rest. He abided so he could have fruitfulness. If there was one person who, who, who has had more fruitfulness than anyone else in history, it's Jesus. He was here three years and he went on to change the world. Talk about fruitfulness. And Jesus modelled this. He modelled abiding. He modelled resting in God the Father. 
How are you going with that? What do you need to put in place in your life? You know, to finish off, I'm reminded of a great verse, Matthew 11, 28 and 29. And these are Jesus' words and Jesus spoke these. He said, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. This is the example that Jesus said. He's saying, learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And I will give you rest for your souls. Does that sound awesome? Do you need rest for your soul? Jesus is showing us here. Had to live with rest as part of our life, not just as part as a foundation of our lives. And as a bonus, we get rest for our souls. As a bonus, we get fruitfulness. Do you need rest? I want to encourage you, take this time of social isolation. Take this time when your calendar is freer. Don't just waste away the hours on Netflix or YouTube. Put rhythms in your life right now that will set you up for the rest of this year. Put rhythms in your life right now that will set you up for the rest of your life. You know, if, if I've got a challenge for you. If you are feeling brave, only do this if you are feeling brave. If you are feeling brave, this week, maybe starting tonight, before you head into rest tonight. As you reflect on this, as you sit around on the couch after this sermon. As you reflect on this message, Jesus might be putting something on your heart. Don't push that away. But if you're brave, say, Jesus, what patterns of rest do I need to start implementing? In my life right now. So if you're brave, pray what patterns of rest do I need to start implementing in my life right now? Let me pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he didn't just pay lip service to this, but he modeled this. He modeled resting, he modeled abiding, connecting with the vine, connecting with the Father so that he could have fruitfulness. He modelled a healthy work and rest balance. Father, if you are putting something on our heart right now, I pray that we will be obedient. If we are going to be brave enough this week, maybe even tonight, to pray that prayer, what do you need me to put in my life for the rest of this year, for the rest of this week, I pray that we will be obedient to what you put on our heart. Father, we just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, friends. Hey, don't miss out Testimony Tuesday. Don't miss out on Thursday Thought. And we'll see you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.